Week 7 is in the rear view, and we had blowouts, shootouts, upsets, and everything in between. That's why I love college football. We don't get this in the NFL the way we do here in college football. Uh, but so let's talk about some of these games we saw and uh, what do we think. Um, well, we're going to start with these uh, in kind of the order that they got played. Uh, starting with Alabama and Arkansas, uh, Bama escapes from this one with win 24 to 21. Uh, Bama was up at half 21 to six, uh, but then second half you, you allow Arkansas to fight back and really make this a game, uh, getting outscored in the second half 15 to three. Uh, Arkansas had an opportunity to win this one, and uh, Alabama was looking very, very beatable, especially going into uh, uh, their game against Tennessee. They got some. They got LSU later on in the season. They got some tough games, and if they can't, if they can't really seal the deal in some of these, it makes you think uh, one of those they're bound to slip up. Uh, next up, Georgia and Vandy. Now Georgia wins this one, thirty-seven to twenty, uh, but that score is is very deceiving, especially for anybody who didn't watch the game. Uh, yeah, Vandy scored 20 points, and Georgia only scored 37. Uh, but, but but make no mistake about it, Georgia was absolutely dominant in this game. Uh, 552 total yards to Vandy's 219. Uh, Vandy only got 18 rushing yards to Georgia's 291, close to 300. Uh, the, the big thing to take away from this is uh, Georgia looking a little happy to give the ball away. You had two turnovers. Uh, it was minus one in the in, in the turnover battle here, and I think they fumbled the ball like three times, uh, and got lucky and only lost one of them. Uh, you do that in some other games, you know, Ole Miss and Tennessee coming up, uh, you might just lose one of those games. Uh, losing the turnover battle in those is not uh, going to get you very far. Uh, Washington and Oregon, probably one of my favorite games of the week. Uh, I picked Washington to win this one, and I was right. Uh, Washington wins it 36-33, or Michael Penix Jr. is putting up video game numbers, uh, 302 yards, four touchdowns. Um, the 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 big stats, the big things that uh, Oregon fans are upset about is, you know, one they were zero for three on fourth down, uh, just and some bad coaching decisions going for it on fourth in the red zone. Um, you know, those are decisions that. Uh, the fans are going to love it if, you, if you're successful. They're going to absolutely have, want your head on a stake if, if they don't work out. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. Um, you know, or, Oregon's got a really good football team, and uh, I have a feeling we're going to see this game again later on in the season. Uh, moving on, Tennessee and a Texas A&M. Uh, I love Tennessee, so I, we're going to spend a little bit more time on this one. But uh, Tennessee wins 20-13. With 232 rushing yards to A&M's 54, uh, this was a this was a huge uh, thing that everybody thought was going to be important going into this game. Uh, A&M only allowing less than three yards per carry. Uh, Tennessee didn't care. We ran the ball up and down their throats all night long, and there wasn't anything Texas A&M could do about it. Now the with the good comes the bad. Milton is kind of who he is. I mean, at, at this point, I don't think we're going to expect. I don't think we can expect any more improvement. I don't think we can expect better play out of him. Um, you know, he completed 50% of his passes uh, against A&M for only 100 yards, one touchdown, one interception. That is about as middle of the road as you could possibly be as a quarterback. Now, I'm not saying he can't have a good game. I mean, he could ball out against anybody, uh, but I'm not expecting it. I'm expecting kind of your 60% passer where he's just, you know, kind of a game manager. Uh, Tennessee has become a run first, second, third. Uh, as many times as we can run the ball, we're going to run the ball. Uh, and I think that's just our identity right now. We just have to accept that this is not last year's team. Uh, now this defense, though, man, that defense, they played their hearts out. Uh, pressured Max Johnson on 25 of his 39 dropbacks. That's the highest allowed by AM since Pro Football Focus started keeping track of the stat in 20, 2014. Uh Look at moving forward for A and M. They're they're most likely looking at a seven and five, eight and four, like they are every year, um, because they still got to play South Carolina, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, LSU. I, I just find it hard to believe they're going to do any better than uh, one loss out of those four games remaining. Um, and A and M fans are upset, and I totally understand why. You feel kind of trapped with Jimbo Fisher. I mean, you, you owe him seventy million dollars if you were to fire him this year. Uh, then sixty million dollars next year. I mean, it's 
you're not getting in any better of a situation and you're looking like you're kind of stuck with him. Uh, I think the highest payout for a coach is under $30 million and you guys can't get rid of this one for less than 70. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, anyway, moving forward to Louisville and Pitt. So Pitt beats up on Louisville, upsets Louisville 38 to 21. Uh, and Louisville did not help themselves at all with three turnovers. Um, Really, when you look at this game on paper, Louisville won in every statistical category just about, except turnovers. And, and that's how you lose football games. You can have the best running game, the best passing game. Uh, it don't matter. If you lose that turnover battle, you are you can get beat very easily. And, and Pitt showed up for this one and uh, put it to Louisville. Uh, LSU and Auburn. Jaden Daniels, 20-27 for 325, three touchdowns and a pick. Uh, 563 total yards on offense. LSU finally looked like uh, the team we thought they were. The only time they've looked this dominant uh, was Mississippi State. Now, Mississippi State and Auburn are by no means uh, great SEC West football teams. Uh, They're kind of the bottom of the barrel when it comes to the West at the moment. Uh, But nonetheless, LSU finally looked like they had it together. Um, Looking forward to that LSU-Bama game. It's looking better and better every week. Uh, but moving on to Mizzou and Kentucky. Kentucky went up 14 nothing in the first quarter. And when Kentucky is up by 14 points, they are 75-3 and with a 14-point lead. Well, now they're 75-4. and Kentucky turns the ball over three times. Uh, the story of this week has been turnovers. Um, that Generally, this week, who, who won the turnover battles? Who won the football game? Uh, you know, we said that about... Uh, Mizzou, Louisville, uh, Tennessee, and later on we'll say it about a couple other teams. But the story of this week has been turnovers. Uh, the teams who lose the turnover battle lose the game. Uh, and that was no different here in Mizzou and Kentucky. Uh, Mizzou is looking for real. They're 6-1 and one now. Uh, they're, making, they're making statements and noise that they, maybe they deserve to be winning, this, winning the East here. And, uh, well, we'll find out here in a couple weeks, won't we, when they go play Georgia. Uh, moving on to North Carolina and Miami. So North Carolina knocks off Miami 41-31 after Miami was up at half, 17-14. Uh, and then you got out and then Miami gets outscored like 27 to 14 in the second half. Uh, the, Miami is just kind of disappointing, disappointing. I mean they had that good game against Texas A&M week 1 uh, and then you lose to Georgia Tech the way you did. Uh, and you blow a lead to North Carolina. Now, granted, North Carolina is a really good football team. I mean, Drake May uh, threw for 273 yards with four touchdowns. I mean, he, great football team. Um, but Miami, it's it's over for you guys. I mean, you're, we keep getting our expectations up for you, and you keep disappointing over and over and over again. And I, I'm frankly, I'm kind of tired of watching. All right, USC and Notre Dame. That, now, you look at this score, you know, USC 20, Notre Dame 48. You look at this and you think USC's defense finally let them down. Uh, but that is not the case here. The, the, the USC defense did not lose this game. I think their defense will lose them a game later on in the season, but that was not this game. Uh, Caleb Williams lost this game for USC. Caleb Williams, three interceptions. Um, you, you cannot win a game against a team like Notre Dame with three interceptions and then two lost fumbles. Uh, so five turnovers. You are minus five in turnovers. There's absolutely zero way you win a game, especially when, when a lot of those interceptions and turnovers resulted in uh, you know drive lengths less than half a football field uh, for Notre Dame. I mean, Notre Dame only had 250 total yards, but they had Four hundred. They had forty-eight points. Uh, three of ten on third down. Um, almost half the first downs that USC had. There is no category on this list that Notre Dame won except for turnovers and the scoreboard. Um, USC will lose a game to you know maybe Utah, Cal, Washington, Oregon. Any of those are, are very losable for USC if their defense doesn't improve. Uh, but the defense was not the reason Notre Dame won this game. Um, 
USC, dude, I, there's more losses coming for you. I, I think you lose to Washington and Oregon. Uh, and you're going to be lucky if you can escape from Utah and UCLA without losing. Uh, it's looking rough for USC. Uh, we see this song over and over and over again with uh, Lincoln Riley. Did the same thing in Oklahoma. Um, USC is currently leading the Pac-12, but, that, but that's going to change. <sighs> anyway, that's about going to wrap it up. I mean, there's more. There's plenty of other games that, that went on. Uh, I think Purdue got blown out by what was it Penn State, maybe. Uh, but those are the games that all looked that were the most interesting uh, to watch, uh, most interesting to look into. Uh, anyway, where we where does where does college football stand now that now that week seven's in the rear view? Uh, everybody's played at least six football games. Uh, so how do, how are the conferences shaping up? Well, the Pac-12 championship game is likely going to be a rematch of the Washington-Oregon State game that we just watched. Um, and I know it's really hard for a team to beat this for a team to beat the same team twice, uh, but I, I have I'm pretty confident Washington wins that football game. I, I just think Washington's a better football th- team than Oregon. Uh, the SEC is kind of a toss-up though. Uh, if if you put you know put put me on the spot and make me guess right now, I guess I would have to say Bama and Georgia are probably the two most likely winners of their respective divisions. Uh, but I don't feel super confident about Bama at all. Uh, Big 12, uh, you're likely going to see an Oklahoma and Texas rematch. Uh, Red River Rivalry Part 2. Um, and I think Texas will win this one. And I think Texas was the better football team last time, but they didn't win, so now I hopefully they'll get the chance to prove it in the Big 12 championship game. Uh, Big 10 is, is kind of hard to guess, too. Michigan's probably going to win the Big Ten East. But then who are, who are they playing? Iowa? Wisconsin? I'm, I mean, the Big Ten West is, is not good. I think Arkansas would win the Big Ten West. That's that's how bad it is, and, and Arkansas is far from a good football team. <clears throat> anyway, uh, ACC right now, uh, FSU and North Carolina are leading that race. They're the only two teams left remaining undefeated, uh, and they don't play each other. So uh, they keep winning. And we'll see that we will see that game, <clears throat> and that'll be a good one to watch too. Uh, Florida State, you know, they had a big win over LSU, and then they kind of been flying under the radar. You know, I I certainly haven't been paying much attention to them, and and same with North Carolina. Other than checking the scores, I I'm certainly not paying a whole lot of attention to North Carolina, and, and maybe I should, uh, but as of right now, haven't really been looking at them too much. Uh, anyway, that's going to wrap up the week seven recap. I uh, greatly appreciate y'all for listening. If you like the video, leave a like. Uh, if you don't like the video, let me know what it is you didn't like in the comments. Uh, also, tell me what games you enjoyed most out of Week 7 down in the comments. Uh, thank you. Have a great rest of your day.